here with my 32 slash 33 week bump date. I obviously didn't get a bump date out earlier this week and that's for a few reasons. The main reason being we had a stressful couple of days um, and we're almost going to go to the hospital. So basically what happened was on starting I'd say like Monday afternoon, I just kind of, I felt really, really drained. That was sort of it on Monday. I just felt really tired, really lethargic. So I was like, okay, I'll film on Tuesday. And then Tuesday I woke up and I just felt lightheaded. I felt off. I didn't feel sick, but I definitely felt, I don't know, like maybe it, dehydrated would be the right word. I. I'm, but I drank a lot of water, I made sure to snack, I just was feeling off again. And I did notice a little bit that there was a, sort of a slight decrease in fetal movement. He just wasn't as active as normal. He was still being relatively active, so I, it wasn't something that kind of popped onto my radar at the time. But um, yeah, I just I, overall it was kind of just a weird day and I was not feeling myself. So then Wednesday rolled around and still was, it, it was progressing, right? Like by Wednesday I was even worse. And at that point, really he hadn't been moving. So usually I have, we, we nicknamed him the Wiggle Monster <laughs> because he basically wiggles all day throughout the day, all night, kind of like he's, he has sleep cycles, obviously, like he'll be rested at some points, but overall I'd say that he generally gives us movement throughout the day and the night. So if I'm ever worried, I can have a glass of cold water or a snack and lay down on my left side. There, see, he's just moving right now. And, and he'll move. So I have been doing kick counts. I haven't been doing them as regularly as maybe I should be, just because I feel him all the time and I, I just know intuitively that he's fine. Well, on Wednesday, when I wasn't feeling anything, obviously I did all the things that normally you would want to do to try and get movement or to get them be, to be active. And none of those things were working. Uh, so I would try something, I'd lay down, I'd rest, nothing, try it again, nothing. Um, I did do fetal, I, I laid down at one point because I sort of got some activity and I did some kick counts. It took me over an hour though to get 10 movements and those 10 movements were very faint. They weren't strong like they had been in the past and so that was a really big red flag for me because generally speaking I'd say I can get 10 good movements in under 10 minutes. So it was alarming anyways but I you know had my rational head on. I'm like I'm not gonna panic. I'm just you know Maybe it's because I'm not feeling well, or maybe, you know, I don't know. I didn't really know why, um, but I was trying to not go to worst case scenario. I, I did want to let Eric know, so sort of in the mid-afternoon, after I tried a lot of things multiple times, I, let, I, I alerted him that, you know, just so you know, <laughs> we may end up having to go in just because, for a check just because I haven't been feeling movement. Just to make sure everything's fine. I'm sure it is. So he's like, okay, just keep me posted. And I finally, at, at like 4.30ish, decided, you know what, it's been all day. I haven't really felt anything. My one kick count that I did is over an hour. So I think it's time to call my OB. I thought the OB was open until 5, so I was even thinking I could hopefully sneak in to the office hours and just get checked out. Unfortunately, they close at four on Wednesdays. Sorry, the lighting just changed. <laughs> it's probably dark. Um, but yeah, so I couldn't get through, couldn't get through. I was getting really frustrated. I was like, why is it going straight to the, an like the answering service? Um, and I'd have to call the after hours doctor and it seemed a bit, I don't know, it seemed aggressive at the time, but I finally caved and called the after hours on-call doctor. They put me through, I was told to go to the hospital. So I let Eric know, I'm like, he was super busy and stressed at work and I really felt bad, but I'm like, I don't know what else to do. Like, I don't know if we should wait longer or what. 
So I basically started running around. I mean, we have started getting organized our hospital bag, but not like, it's nowhere near organized. So I threw a bunch of stuff together just in case we ended up staying at the hospital overnight or heaven forbid something even worse. Um, but once I got that all organized and I laid down and started waiting for Eric, of course he started moving. So he his movements still weren't very strong. It, it was sort of more like a, the Tuesday where I could feel him, but it was faint. So I did kick count and I got 10 mild movements in about 20 minutes. So we kind of at that point were like, well, I don't know if we need to be going into the hospital anymore because technically we have 10 movements and under the hour. He was, it was still a bit faint. So I decided let's hold off and we'll try it again. I'll have some more food. I'll have some more water. I'll lay down and we'll see if we can get 10 good movements, um, like good strong movements tonight. And later on in the evening that ended up happening. So it was all a false alarm, but obviously it, I was very high anxiety and it's just a scary experience because you don't want to leave it so late that you're in a situation where baby is already, you know, lacking oxygen or really something has gone wrong. Uh, you want to be preemptive about it, but I didn't, I also don't want to be so paranoid that I go in unnecessarily. I know it's always better safe than sorry, but part of me also really hates hospitals, a big part of me. Um, and I like to avoid anything that's un I, that is unnecessary. So I trusted my gut all throughout the day. You know, I definitely did call the doctor. I was ready to go in because I felt like it was necessary, but when it became not necessary, then we just left it. Luckily the next day, yesterday, um, I was good. He was moving a ton again today. He's moving a ton and I'm feeling better. So I don't know if I just had a bit of a, a bug or something, or if it was just because I was lacking sleep, who knows? It's really, I don't, I can't explain it, but I wasn't feeling well and he wasn't moving. So there's probably some kind of correlation at least there. In terms of how I've been doing over the last couple weeks, because this is sort of a two week bump date combined, not much has changed. I, um, Definitely in full on nesting mode. I am going like crazy, running around the house, getting everything cleaned, organized. I just want, I want everything in order so that when he does come, that it's just, I can focus on that. I don't have to worry about the fact that our office isn't set up or that we have a stack of bills to go through or whatever. So I've been focused on that. Um, this weekend we also have our maternity session, which I'm so excited about. So we went shopping and got Eric some outfits. Um, I've got my outfits. I need to do a bit of tailoring. Um, so I'm gonna do that probably later today or tomorrow. And then, yeah, we're, we're off on Sunday evening. We're doing sort of like a sunset type session down at the beach. So we'll see how that all turns out. I'm hoping to do some behind the scenes footage for you guys. Um, I've never worked with this photographer before, so I'm not sure how she'll be, but I'm gonna try. I'll get what I can anyways. And show you guys getting ready and what we do and our outfits and everything. And then obviously, once we have the photos, we'll share those as well. Uh, we are still breach, unfortunately. So I'm doing a lot of things. There's a website called it Spinning Babies or Flipping Babies. Which it's one of those two, but it's basically it gives you all these different techniques and exercises that you can do to try and encourage baby to flip. We're really, really, really hoping that he does flip in the next couple of weeks because they say by about 36 weeks, usually that the position is more likely to be locked in. Um, it's not to say that they won't flip because it happens. Um, he's just he's been breached this entire pregnancy, and I go to a chiropractor and do Webster technique. And she just talks about constantly how tight my ligaments are. And she's every time I go, she's really trying to loosen me up. And yeah, I think that there may just not be room or my body's just too tight to allow him to rotate. I, I don't know. Um, she did say that sometimes when babies don't turn, it's because they like shouldn't turn, you know, whether there's an issue with the cord or a space issue or whatever. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to con come to terms that it may be necessary for us to have a cesarean section. If that is the case, then whatever needs to happen to get him into the world healthy and happily. Um, obviously, it's not my plan A, but 
if I can kind of prepare myself for that now, I think that there'll be a lot less emotion if that does come to be. So I'm processing through that right now. I've talked to some other moms who have had to have that uh, procedure and I'm feeling better and better and better about it. Obviously, I really wanted to do a traditional pain-free, or not pain-free, liver is not pain-free, <laughs> um, medication-free, natural, whatever you want to call it, delivery. Um, but I think that I also learned through our infertility journey that things don't go as planned and you just kind of have to be flexible and whatever is meant to be will be. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now with that. Uh, otherwise, my symptoms are all pretty much the same. I still have heartburn. I'm on Nexium, unfortunately, just because I've I tried taking nothing. I tried taking split like, Tums. I tried taking Nexium or anything. Like there's a few other things that people have recommended, but nothing works, unfortunately. I was someone who had had a bit of heartburn, acid reflux before pregnancy. I've always had sort of digestional issues. So I guess it's not surprising that it's so extreme, but I wasn't sleeping and it was making it difficult for me to eat. So I think when you outweigh the risks versus the benefits, it was something that our doctor decided was in my best interest. So that's what we're doing. So I've been feeling a lot better and I'm getting more sleep for sure. Um, my allergies are going crazy right now, which is frustrating, but I think it's also because I've been cleaning and kicking up a lot of dust in our house probably. Uh, so I'm, with that, I'm trying to avoid medication. So I'm already on medication. I don't want to be taking too much. So I'm just, yeah, aches and pains, shin splints, heels are still hurting. Um, I haven't really gotten too swollen, but that's because I am fortunate enough to not be really working. And so I can take breaks and lay down and elevate my feet. So I haven't had too much issue with that yet. I'm not going to say I'm not going to have that issue because it's still early days, but, um, Overall, I'm feeling pretty good and I'm just getting really excited and we're sort of coming into the last month-ish, you know, uh, we were going to get our car seat installed and lots of, lots of fun stuff coming up. So uh, I think I'll leave it there for now, guys. Uh, as I said, this weekend, I'll take you along for our maternity session and then next week we have, we have our 34 week uh, OB appointment. So hopefully we'll know if he's turned yet or not. And uh, we'll be packing hospital we'll start. I don't know if this is going to happen next week, but we should be starting to pack our hospital bags and we'll go over what we packed in that. And yeah, just share anything that kind of comes up along the way with you guys. I apologize again about not having a video up early this week. Um, but as I said, things kind of were a little bit hairy there for a couple days. So Thanks as usual for watching. Um, so much love to you all and we'll see you next time. Bye.